Good afternoon, you guys. Welcome to First Among Equals, and I am here with the lovely Miss Betty. Thank you. Um, Dr. Betty, to be exact. <laughs> uh, she's the owner of Backbenders in Eagle Rock, um, and I'm really excited to have you on here. How are you today? I'm very good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Um, the reason I, I asked you to come on the show is just because um, First Among Equals is uh, sort of a broad spectrum of people that I that I personally find, uh, Danny knows, that I just know that you guys are working really hard to kind of be the best in what you can do and strive for your own personal excellence. So I really uh, thank you for coming to the podcast. It means a lot to me. Thank you very much for seeing that in my work. That's exactly what I strive for. Yeah, I see it in your work. I, I see it on Instagram. Instagram is so amazing. I'm, I, I talk a lot of smack about social media in general just being sometimes sort of a uh, just the catalyst to a lot of negative things, but I also like to uh, focus on it being positive too. And so when I see the things that you're posting and sort of the inspirational stuff, it inspires me to wanna be a better person and kind of get to know you better. So that's why thank you're you. here. Thank yes. you, thank you. So can you um, kind of tell us a little bit about what you do and your services that you offer? Uh, sure, so I'm a chiropractor, among other things. I always start, say that that's sort of like my starting point. That's okay. where I started. And then I've evolved from chiropractic uh, in my practice. I do vibrational healing. I do crystal healing work. So Backbenders is essentially just kind of like a launch pad, I feel. It's evolved over the years, and I'm really, really happy where it's at. Um, so it's chiropractic, massage. We offer Pilates. I'm also a Pilates instructor. Um, and, and we also do energy work. Uh, that's that's very recent, right? The Pilates. Yes, I saw that. Yes, exactly. Recently, totally. I, I we had we've had Pilates in the office. I would say for about seven, eight years, mm -hmm. and I always would say, "Gosh, I really should just do it. Go back and do it. Go back and do it." And then I finally just decided I, I didn't research because I'm always with the research. Mm -hmm. And I found a I found a school that I was really resonant with. And so I went ahead and did it, and um, it was challenging trying to run a business and everything else, but it was done. Did it, and I passed. Yay! Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So, um, why um, why did you decide, like when you were, you know, younger and kind of figuring out what you were doing, what was it about chiropractic, sort of the ideas behind it? That I think uh, a lot of it has to do with just being raised in a Mexican culture. Okay. We always um, sort of went with the salves and, you know, the herbs and the tinctures yeah. and that kind of thing before my mom even thought about taking us to the doctor, you know, <laughs> yeah. we, did, we, you know, we didn't have money growing up. So it was always like, what can we do? Put that, put the savil on, you know, yeah, let's yeah. see what we can do before. So I kind of already had that mindset. And then um, when we had like a career day in high school. Okay. We had a... What, uh, I'm sorry, what neighborhood did you grow up in? I grew up in East L.A. Okay, you did. East awesome. Los. Boyle East Heights, Los. Boyle Heights. Boyle Heights. Oh, um, that's awesome. <laughs> and so I attended... Um, my last two years, I attended Bravo Medical Magnet. Oh, cool. So I graduated from Bravo. But we did have a career day one time. And the chiropractor of the Raiders at the time oh, whoa. was a speaker. And I was really, really interested in the fact that he was able to work with athletes because I always played a lot of athletics growing up and um, that just kind of sparked my curiosity of like oh I could you know be a doctor and still work with athletes so I just sort of pursued that all throughout like my junior senior high I bribed my brother to take me to the chiropractic college <laughs> and um, went into the anatomy room just to see if I could handle it and then I uh, just talked to the counselors and asked them you know, what, what do I need to do to come here? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so they gave me the list of all the prereqs. I went to ELAC. Awesome. East LA College. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and I took all the prereqs. Um, it was difficult to do it that way. But in my head at the time, I just didn't think of any other way to do it. We didn't have money to do a four-year. No. And then go to, like, you know, graduate school. So I figured, you know, I'll just do my prereqs community college I'll just try as hard as I could it was a really hard transition going from from like a community college mindset to like a graduate school everybody there had like their BAs totally. already and wow so it, it was a struggle it was a struggle but um I got through it you know and you know what's hard about that too is like back in the day you had to show up to class 
now I was thinking about this. It's just like now you can just go online. You can do hybrid. They make it so easy. Yeah. In a strange, like in a way, in a strange way to kind of get a degree. But like back in the day, in like the '90s and 2000s, yeah. even it was like you had to show yeah. up. So everyone right. who has their degrees really to be like really earned. And full disclosure, I am a nerd. I'm like a total nerd. I never skip school. I'm a weirdo. Yeah. Uh, yeah with I was I was totally into school. I was just a nerd. I was just like a school person. To the day, I still love to read and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's very true. Yeah, right? Yeah. And I just think now it's you can skip things and jump things. And, yeah. you know, I remember Cliff's Notes and I remember yes. weird ways that you could kind of get around stuff back in the day. But that was even sort of taboo was like yeah. those books. You know, like you had to be really careful because you didn't want to get caught. But now I kind of feel like they encourage this sort of switching and just like, oh, only read this one chapter. It's like, you'll buy a whole book. Right. And, and, it's, and it dro used to drive me crazy. You yeah. buy this $500 exactly. book. And, the, and it's, it's so just, expensive. It's such a ring. It's right. such a ring. And yeah. so it's strange that they have these little ways now that you can kind of rent a book and you don't really have to like do all right. this, the work. It's a millennial thing. It's, yes. I struggle with it. It's like, they just, they're so used to having it now and they don't yes. earn it. They don't have to go to the library. In one of my podcasts we were talking about was like, you had to go to the library and then they give you a list of books. And then you got to look them up. You got to physically find <laughs> yeah. And then if they're there, yeah. and then usually the book list, it was always like the fattest books were left because the, the smart, together, nerdy kids yeah. would go early and get whatever books they wanted. And then it was like me, the late one, <laughs> trying to get in the AP <laughs> summer class. And I'm like, oh, I have to get like whatever, yeah. you know, Gone with the Wind. or No, it's true. You know. It's true. It, it, I mean, my son, my oldest is in college now and I see the difference. You know, I, I really do see the difference. Yeah, it's it's really amazing. So I'm I'm really that's such a cool story just to hear the struggle and sort of. So what what did you find was the most uh, challenging part of that whole process for you? I think just uh, the level of uh, academic work went going from you know community college straight to like graduate school. Where did you go after? Um, I went straight from East LA to wow. chiropractic college. Where, which chiro uh, even... It's called LA College of Chiropractic. When I graduated, they changed it to the University of Southern California Health Sciences. Um, so it's called, that's what it's called now, and it's in Whittier. And um, that school's evolved as well. They also offer like an acupuncture program. I actually did start acupuncture school really? as well during the time I was doing chiropractic college. Just because I'm like those weird, uh, I'm just like an overachiever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I was like, okay, this is too much even for me. And then again, the financial thing was in the back of my mind because I was borrowing money throughout this whole time. Yeah. So I can attend, you know, I'll be 65 when I pay off my student loans. You know what? But you know what? It's, it's totally worth it's a it. Journey. There was just no other way for me to do no, it. No, and back then there wasn't. Yeah, that's exactly. not even that long ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like things have just like yeah, you know. Moved. I mean, the thing is, I mean, at least Elac, I paid nothing because my, I mean, you know, my mom, she made nothing. Yeah, so, yeah. So you know, I was able to get my books paid, and they gave me you know Cal grants, and yeah. I actually got a, a small scholarship from Bravo, but um, yeah, it was definitely that. That was one of the hardest things. I've had to go through that and doing my boards. <laughs> yeah. That was really struggle too. Why was that? Why was it more? Um, so in order to uh, get your license, you mm -hmm. have to do four parts of the chiropractic boards. Okay. And then you have one small part for California licensure. So the first part does all the anatomy, all the like the really hard stuff. That was really difficult for me because those are the um, those are the subjects I did have a little bit of problems with. Uh, and I ended up like doing extra classes and I mean, I make it figuring it exactly. out. Exactly. I, I feel it made me stronger for sure at the end. You know how they always say that? Yeah. But it really did. It really did. It sort of cemented everything because I had to relearn it twice. Um, but I'm um, oh, sorry. Are you more scientific approach? I like the way you look at things or do you have more? I what do you sort think? of have both. Okay. So I usually, um, it, if it's an esoteric sort of idea, yeah. I always try to merge the science behind it. I don't always go like 100% blindly into things, um, but there is that little bruja part of me. That, well, I love yeah, that, sure. and that's why I think I see that. <laughs> yeah. I see that in some of the the um, the messaging that you're sending out, yeah. and that's the reason why I felt like this connection to wanting to talk to you. Yeah. Because it's funny that you said that, because that's exactly what I felt without those words. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely that. You know, that's just, you know, it's part of our culture. It's just, 
It's just yeah. the way um, I, I can't explain it unless well, you're it's worldly. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Or Latino, you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, but I do, I do um, veer towards the science, but it's sort of like a merge between both. So yeah, even when like, I did my crystal healing certification, it was um, I had to know why. But why does this work? I know it feels great, and I can see that it works because I use it in my practice, but why? I needed yeah. to know the answer why because also patients want to ask me. Clients want to ask me why. I can't just be like, oh, yeah, but can't you just believe? I mean, you could, yeah. right? But, you know, sometimes we, we need to give them a little bit more of a basis. Absolutely. So that was definitely, um, it always sort of guides to uh, me where or what type of training because I'm always doing some sort of continuing ed. I'm, I just, I'm a lifelong learner and I'll yeah, always be doing that. Me too. So, um, that's definitely one of the things I, I look, I look at when, when it's the time to like try a different skill or. Do you, um, oh, this is so great. Um, I used to be a huge, I used to read a lot of Louise Hayes, uh, you can heal your mind yes. and it was very much connected to body and mind and blockages. Right. And since you're here, I'm like so excited. Um, but those emotional blockages that sort of turn into the physical yes, manifestations. manifestations of, yeah. yeah. And I, and I also think, um, just seeing different bodies, feeling different bodies throughout my whole time being at Backbenders, I always, um, I felt like it was my responsibility to really find out and know as much as I could about that sort of, was that a possibility? having a manifestation in your body due to an emotion. So I did a lot of reading and of course I did different courses and that's absolutely true. Um, I'm actually doing a vibrational sound healing course in June, at the end of June. That's so exciting. Um, and it's based on a book that I read. It's called Tuning the Human Biofield by Eileen McCusick and her stuff really, really kind of hit me, all hit all like the boxes, the science, you know, um, it, it just kind of merged it all together. And I self-taught on tuning forks. Do you know what tuning forks yes, are? Yes, I do. So I self-taught on tuning forks. Uh, and uh, Tuning forks are? So tuning forks are, are basically um, uh, little metal. They come with, like, look like a fork. Yeah, yeah forks. and they have different uh, frequencies depending on um, if you're working it, working it on the body. They have weights at the end. If you're using it for more of like the aura or the biofield, then they won't That's have so cool. any weights on them. So the ones I use yeah. right now are the ones with the weights. Oh, and which one, what do they signify? Uh, how do they differentiate? So without... so the different hertz, um, so it's, uh, people that are musicians really like this. So it's like different frequencies. Uh, they are tuned to different frequencies. So your tissues of the body is one frequency. Your heart is a different frequency. Your brain's a different frequency. So everything that we're sort of made up with have different frequencies. Mm -hmm. And so uh, using, so her theory is that we are electrical as we are chemical. That's mm -hmm. why, you know, drugs work and why you can use an echocardiogram to view your heart. Mm -hmm. um, so the theory is if you get a stuck emotion or a trauma yeah. that gets sort of stuck in your biofield. Yeah. So all your biofield is basically a bubble that extends around your body about six feet all the way around. It's toroidal, so it, it goes out this way. Okay. And so that's just how, that's just our, Yeah, that's just our- Yeah, exactly. That's just how our we- Our vibrational made. bubble of- Exactly. Yeah, of our body. It's rhythm. It's all exactly. rhythmic. Exactly. Yeah. So if you have a stuck emotion or if you have uh, some sort of trauma that gets stuck in that biofield, yeah. it interrupts the electrical- Yeah, the me mechanics of- Of your body, yeah. right? And so it can cause depression, PTSD- Yeah. Knee pain. Yeah. Whatever. It's the clearing of exactly. it. Exactly. So um, her training- uh, so she trains you to recognize through the tuning forks, okay. find the emotions. So she's mapped out the biosphere, the biosphere, sort of like um, the acupuncturists have mapped out the meridians. And so she can tell you, so for example, right side, right shoulder, this is um, where your dad, and this mm -hmm. is like anger. And then Th does it, does she specify it that? So oh, wow. interesting. So six feet out from your body, right? Yeah. So at that six foot length, that would be you at birth. So the closer oh. we get you to your your body, 
then that's you more present. So say, for example, this is a 60-year-old person. Halfway through, this is something that happened in their 30s. Okay. And as you get closer to their body, whatever you find, that's something. So it's okay. in a way you kind of can get... Wow, it's, so it's kind of like uh, like a ga galactic even. It's like yeah. if you look at the planets Prior. and you see all the linear exactly. lines sort of And then anything beyond those here. six feet is wow. going to be ancestral, maternal, paternal. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it goes really down the rabbit hole after that. That's, so, cute. That's amazing. I know. I'm so excited. And so anyhow, uh, she teaches you to find that emotion or whatever it is and uh, redeposit it back into your body through the chakra system. Okay. Have it processed and recycled. And then have and then that electrical field. Out. And cleared. And yeah, and have so the electrical field now, yeah, cleansed. Wow. I mean, it's really super interesting. Um, and I decided to learn more about it once uh, I just use them in my practice. I self-taught. And then I'm just like, I really need to, <laughs> to <laughs> how do does this work? You know, I really yeah. need to find this out because it, it definitely works. Um, did, do you find that when you were looking for that, was that some sort of energy or message that was going on in your life that you needed to well connect with on a definitely the beginning part of that um so i have uh one of my oldest employees and she is the best her name's dina and a lot of people from backbenders know dina she's an amazing massage therapist she's a reiki healer she's just a really awesome light so she sort of brought in mm. that energy work into my practice, she just kind of said, hey, you know, I've been thinking about this. Would, you, would it be okay? Can we try this out? And I was like, yeah, I mean, try it out on myself. And then, you know, I, let's, let's see if we can work something out. So they came a point where I'm like, like I said, I'm always trying to do um, continuing education. And I had the opportunity to do either a sports medicine or should I go the other way? Mm -hmm. And I really, really thought about it. And I said, you know what? I think I'm gonna do the crystal healing. Yeah. And I did the crystal healing and it sort of just progressed. Snowballed. Exactly. That. Yeah. And that's actually uh, was one of the books on her um, like reading list that she had when we do, did the crystal healing. And I forgot about that book and until I was like, you know, I think I want to revisit this vibrational sound healing stuff. I want to let me see what I have in my library, some books that I haven't read. And I found the book. Isn't that crazy? And I was like, it's there ah, the whole time. it was there the whole time. Seriously. What a trip. I know. Everything that we need is here. Exactly. Like always. And it's like, sometimes oh, yeah. you have to, you think you have to keep going out. Yeah. You know, I, I don't mm -hmm. know. I always trip out on that. It's like, we gotta go shopping. We gotta go get the thing we need. And yeah. then sometimes you come home and you already had it. Yeah. Like it's just like, it's it, psychological. And, it's, and sometimes it just wasn't the time. It was, it's the timing. Yes. You know, yes. the timing wasn't right. You know, cause I'm like, I've had this for two years. Yeah. <laughs> but I was, you know, out. You were ready for it. You, yeah. were, you were ready to see yeah. it or read it or, sure. or take it in. Yeah. But it was always there. Yeah. What, um, when you did it, when, when you sort of did uh, the tuning, did someone do it to you or did you, how, how? No. You did it? You no, know, I haven't done, no, I had haven't that. Has that happened? No, I haven't had, well, I, I actually I did do the tuning forks. One of my other therapists uses tuning forks and that's where I was like, oh, this feels pretty cool. Let me. I'm always like, bigger is better. I'm gonna try it on myself. Let me get some more tuning forks, you know? Oh, wow. And so I um, I got some and I started experimenting and I was like, I took it to a different place than how she uses them. And so I was using it with my clients. Um, and, and what was your was, intention? So my intention is always usually like, if say you come for a neck issue and it's just super tender. So my sessions are really interesting. I. I do chiropractic work, but there's also other, there's these little other components involved. And some, some of it is uh, trigger point work or acupressure work. But if something is too tender, hmm. I'm not going to really force my way in there. So I found that the tuning forks, the weighted tuning forks, have just enough vibration to soften those tissues. That's what they're for. Mm -hmm. They're for to work with the tissues of the body, bring them back into resonance. Okay. And so reading the book, the Human Biofield book, um, she used a crystal and then she put the tuning fork. Oh, wow. So a quartz crystal, if you don't know, is an, is a, is an amplifier. So yeah. it'll amplify your intention, the vibration. Okay. That's just what it is. It's an amplifier. So I use the tuning fork. I use the crystal and then I put the tuning fork and that amplifies that. Okay. And it feels really, really nice. And it, I mean, it works. It, it just, the, the, it just melts the trigger points or the top band of muscle. It just sort of melts. And it's a really uh, nice way to be able to get into some tissues that are just too sensitive mm -hmm. or just 
the, the client's not able to tolerate that. And I'm not, I don't want them to be in more pain. No, just absolutely. trying to, you know, absolutely. sometimes that is the case where I really have to get into it a certain way. But, um, there's certain instances where the tuning forks are just the perfect, the perfect solution. Um, and I mean, I use them for like jaw pain, you know, sinus issues. I've just developed a whole other thing with them and it just really works. Wow. It just really, really works. I'm like, now I'm like, so I want to like, yeah, check it out. Come with I, me. Oh, I'm like, you're going to know now. Like, I'm so excited. Um, when you're working, what do you find? This is, maybe this is really broad, but what are people really coming to? I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe, not that things trend, but are there certain things that people come more so in groups of like having the same issues? More Sometimes that does happen where I have a lot of low back people and then I have a lot of neck people. Um, that's usually the, the sort of two groups, and sometimes it's interesting. I have, like, the first half of the alphabet come, and then the second half of the alphabet wow. come. It's really interesting. Um, but but I can tell that you're the kind of person who kind of, like, is well, like looks at numbers, looks at timing, looks at sort of those yeah. waves of things. Like, right. you're, you're trying to be cognizant of the, right. of the messages that are being sent to you that maybe are more subliminal or just, like, we're not reading. Because I always right. say the writing's on the wall. We're just right. not reading it, or we're not in tune with who we are right and that can and be... there's sometimes i do get messages for the person on the table um and i have to gauge whether that person is going to be receptive mm. or if it's best left unsaid yes um for the most part i think because i explain my sessions right when you start and also if you like look at our website and you look at the yelp reviews or whatever yeah you'll see that it's i always say i'm not your mother's chiropractor um, so it's a little different. It's, it's, it's a little different. So, um, I always sort of get up, get the permission. You know, these are the things that I, I use in my sessions. Are you okay with, you know, sometimes I use crystals, I'll use tuning forks and everybody is pretty receptive. And there are some people that are like, yeah, sure. And then when I work on them, they're like, oh, what was yeah. that again? What did you do? You know? Yeah. And then, then they're intrigued. So that, those are always the really good that's awesome. Um, yeah, like you see it. You yeah. You actually see the... Because I never force myself and I... Like if somebody comes in and, and this has happened where they're like, but don't touch my neck. Don't touch my neck. And I was yeah. like, Fine. No worries. You're the boss. Whatever you want to do. And then I work on the rest of them and I'll do like some trigger point work and then at the end they're like, okay, adjust my neck. And I'm like, are you sure? You just... <laughs> it's a <laughs> trust thing. You know? And it's then they're like, And they're like, oh my gosh, you know? So, um, but I always respect that, you know, because... They know their body the best. And that's what I would say. You know your body the best. So I'm just here to sort of, you know, uh, help your body along yeah, that healing yeah. process. You, you know, you heal you is what I always say. Yeah. I don't do it. You heal you. I just sort of accelerate it. I just help it Amplify out. the success, their, their... The healing process. The healing process. Yeah. So we're constantly healing. Absolutely. That is so Your true. Your body is, you know. And then it's, and, and you, I guess, heal faster if you have the intention to want to heal and you strive towards making healing choices. Absolutely. That is a huge, huge factor in it. And it's a very good point because um, if you're positive about it and if you have the intention to heal, it just, it's like, it goes smoother. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's surrendering. I always yeah. talk about it. it's the surrendering and understanding that this exactly. is a problem and you have a problem and it's And it's like, so easy, right? Like just be positive. It is, like, but it's not. But it's not for it's some people for, because yeah. they have interference. It's like the electrical thing. And, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. So that really made sense to me because um have you ever wondered why some people can say to, that they're going to do something then they do it and other people just say and it never happens? Yeah. And I was like, how does that work? So when I was learning about the the biofield, I was I was really really interested to find out could that be a reason? Like yeah. they're so blocked energetically yeah. that it, you know, they just can't get there. And that's so unfortunate because I think that we're all, nobody's equal. Nobody starts at the same point. Right. It's right. like some people already start having a screwy family, yeah. drug family in a shitty yes. environment. And they've been kicked and kicked and kicked and kicked. And other people start off ahead of the game right. and have a great experience. It's like, how do you... And some people start with a crappy and shitty 
like you know beginning totally. and somehow and, yeah <laughs> they excel turn it and around. they turn it around and it's and really it's like, amazing wow yeah so yeah. it's possible You're because right. i mean there's this whole other thing too about epigenetics and so um that plays a, a part like epigenetics is basically like if the genes are already there yes but do they get activated Oh, so it's so if the environment, yeah, the environment allows that, then they will become activated. However, if say for example, two children that got adopted and their parents were drug addicts, one gets adopted by not so good family and yeah. the other one does, but need but one becomes a drug addict, the other one doesn't. Yeah, you know, so those tendencies are there; they're in your genes. But it's what gets activated exactly. And it has to do with environment. A lot of it has to do with environment. Well, it's nature versus nurture, that mm -hmm. whole concept, too. Yeah. Would you say, in all that you're saying, because what I'm also hearing is that you're, you're, ther you're a therapist in, in, an, in, an, in a lot of ways. In a lot of ways. Right. And you're not saying things. You're maybe selectively not going there for whatever reasons with people, which totally makes sense because you're dealing with their bodies, and, but all of that is connected. How do you self-care? For that. I do a lot of self-care. I get a lot of body work. Um, and I also, for me, you know, meditation looks different for uh, different people. And and um, most people think that it has to be like, oh, uh, yeah. Know. Yeah. And then I, I explain, it doesn't have to. It's whatever works for you. So for me, like exercise is meditation. Like I always get like my best ideas after like a really good spin class. Um, yes. <laughs> so it's, it, it really is. It's, I call it moving meditation. Yeah. So that's one way. For me, I have a really big connection with nature. So like walking my dog, going to Descanso, um, mm -hmm. just walking in the neighborhood. Being connected. That's really big for me. Um, a lot of plant energy. I get a lot. Uh, I get a lot. Do you have a big, sorry, do you have a big garden at home or anything? Like I that don't too? have a huge garden, but uh, I do. Um, everything grows. In the garden, which is, it's always been that way. And I just, everybody's like, oh, you have the green thumb. I'm like, I guess. I mean, I don't <laughs> I really don't know. I thought it was just a property. It's really good soil. <laughs> I thought it was my property. Yeah. That's hilarious. But, but it, I have a lot of, and I'm a plant lady and my husband is like, oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh, gosh. Whatever. But you know what? He Magic. deals with it. He deals with it. I was like, don't make me. Don't, <laughs> don't make me put something behind Put something your on bed. your <laughs> You know. That's your gavacho, but. <laughs> hey, I'll still do it. I love it. Um, but I, that, those are some of the ways. And I, and I get body work with, I just had a Reiki session, an amazing Reiki session with Tina um, just yesterday. It was amazing. So cool. And so I, I definitely, I have to, I have to. I also have to cleanse because I, in, I, I see people and I touch them. So there yeah. is parts of their energy that, you know, I have. That was my next question. Right. And I try to ground myself and... I have crystals underneath my adjusting table. Yeah. There's crystals all over my office because I also have a side business, another second business. I saw that. I saw that on it. So yeah. tell me a little bit about that. So, Sorry, Amina. <laughs> I get all excited. Tell me everything. Uh, so uh, so I started the crystal healing like two years ago and slowly but surely because I'm always thinking, I was like, oh, you know, they're already coming in to backbenders. Why don't we, you know, because I always had questions about like crystals and this and that. So I started selling crystals at backbenders uh, but and then one of my instructors, my Pilates instructors, approached me and said, "Hey, do you want to kind of take it a, to another level. another level?" Because I I would say, "Gosh, I really need to like get that crystal thing going," and you know, and so you just needed that. I needed yes, that because I'm just, it's just so crazy. Yeah, um, that I needed. I feel I felt like I needed a little bit of help in trying to get that off. So she's, she said, let's partner. And I said, let's do it. So we started the Auric Fields and her name's Kim. And so uh, it sort of like started off with a bang. We, um, we have uh, the Auric Fields pop up at Backbenders. So anytime you need some That's really so cool. awesome crystals, they're at Backbenders. We also do corporate events. We've done some corporate events. Wow. I know. It just was like, okay. That's so beautiful that right. that... It's turning into that. Yeah, yeah, wow. that was really exciting to do that. Uh, we got a, we had we had to do a little traveling, and that was interesting. Um, and uh, you know, we do events at Backbenders too. We have like mm -hmm. crystal sales. We're gonna do an awesome event, a sip and smudge, in July. So, That's um, so cool. when in July, it's I think it's the 16th. Okay, I, or sort of. It'll be on social media. Tell people media. to hear this. So yeah, they know. yeah, yeah. 
So, um, yeah, that's like a second sort of business that um, I started with with a partner and it's been really, really fun. It's a lot of work doing two businesses, but um, it's helpful to have that. You know, and my yeah. husband's always my, you know, the silent partner. He's always the one that gets gets things bounced off of. So that's good. He's always involved as well. That's great. Yeah. And um, I'm not. I've done some crystals. Like I'm aware of crystals. I'm not that connected to them in the way that I think. I feel like I've I've had a lot of good friends talk about it and how yeah. important it is. And that might not be your thing. You know, that might be that might not be the way that you connect. Exactly connect. Like I said, like for <clears throat> me. Definitely crystals and nature, but for some people, it's sound, it's music. It's sound, yeah. You know, it, and the other things you were describing is more like color. nature. Yeah, you know, some people. Paint. Yeah, it's, it's art. It, it's it's really different. It's just like I, I I always say as well with patients because sometimes they say uh, I said you know have you done anything that's helped and they're like eh, I tried I tried this it didn't really help it doesn't work and I said well. Mm -hmm. I think everything works, yeah. just not for everybody, right? So yeah, you might resonate true. with acupuncture, I might resonate with chiropractic, he might resonate with massage. It just, it it's doesn't not, work. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you just and have to so, find Yeah, and there's so your, many things. Mm -hmm, exactly. You just have to find your combination. That's so true. And, and never rule anything out until you've tried it. And then once you've tried it, okay, well, I, at least I tried it. It didn't really kind of work for me, so what, let me try something else. What is it about, just out of curiosity for you, what is it about the crystals that you find is the most, sort of what kind of keeps you really there with it? So crystals um, are sort of my, it was sort of like my entry point into this whole, like, mystical mm -hmm. part of the business. Um, I just thought they looked pretty at yeah. first. Because I like pretty things. Yeah. Um, but I really felt a lot of, uh, I felt drawn to them. Mm. And um, there's definitely a couple of crystals like amethyst and citrine um, that really are, I'm attracted to. Uh, and I meditate with them. And um, I just find it to be like balancing in my life. Are your meditations um, just sort of? Sitting with them and setting intentions? Mm -hmm. Yes, sitting with them, setting intentions. I also do crystal grids. Okay. Those are really, really powerful. Um, that sounds so cool. <laughs> yeah, those are really, really powerful. And I've done a lot of, um, I do a lot of like card pulling too, like oracle cards, um, especially if I have a lot of uh, things swirling in my head and I sort of need a little bit of guidance on like, okay, should I go right or left on this? Interesting. I need some help trying to decide this, like, what's the deal? And so I, I'll pull cards and, you know, I'll meditate. And sometimes I do guided meditation. Sometimes you just do some breathing. And it doesn't have to be for like an hour, you yeah, know, yeah. unless you have an hour. But um, it could be like five minutes, ten minutes. Or um, even just like watering my plants. Yes. <laughs> you know? I, I agree with you. Where it's just like it's just you let your mind just kind of go. go and then things start popping up. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you haven't tried it, tried it. Uh, and you'll feel you'll find messages. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, I'd be outside. My neighbor has an avocado tree. Okay. I love avocados. Yeah. And like, they just roll down. Thank you. Wow. That's I know. Beautiful. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> and I was just like, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted an avocado. I would say thank you too. Yeah. I, and I actually do have a fig tree that I never planted. Really? I think a bird might have you know, interesting, and it's I just an amazing really? fig tree. I, I like, I jam, I, I make it into jam. Do you? Oh my gosh! I, that's why we say that. Like, that's so funny. That is actually during my Reiki uh, session, that tree came up because it's so special to me. Oh, so I didn't plant it, and it just like I was like, is that a fig tree? That's so and cool. I'm like my husband's like, I think so, and it just was like started growing and growing and growing. And I actually have a fig tree in the front of my house, but it's a different type of fig. And the one in the back is just like crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. I have a fig tree on my property, and it's not doing well. And it's been here since I got here, and it's really struggling. And all of my other plants, I'm pretty good at like I have conversation. I have yes. I have personalities in my mind and yes. I, I can talk to them he makes no, fun of me no but they respond they there's respond. actual research I, I know because you know they all do. about the research they there's do, actual there's actual research as far as like playing different types of music to them yes 
um, I've showing read that. them scissors. Yeah, really? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. yes. Well, and their vibrations. So their yes, vibrations change. Exactly. Right? Talking to them, I talk to them, I yeah. clean their leaves. Yeah. I, and my kids are like, okay. I'm like, you be quiet. No, I mean, their energy. Don't they are, <laughs> yeah, they're creatures in the world. Of they're course. Not. Everything has vibration. Yeah. Everything has to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, for whatever reason, that tree just doesn't uh, vibrate. Um, I either think accordingly accor to what it should sort of to be hormone it doesn't really bear fr the fruits sort of dry and I've noticed that and then I think am I just setting am I projecting that emotion on there yes yeah. I thought of that too um, but it's been there a long time and it's just not I'm, and sometimes it's just it's time. just yeah I think it's time time yeah it's like sometimes always, that is you know you have to be I like feel okay like I want to I want to well, think of all what? these magical reasons you're right but. no you're right and when I moved first moved in here I had a bunch of nopales on the side of my house but they were all they all had diseases uh, and stuff we had to cut yeah. them all out and I just think sometimes you just have to cut it out yes. like you just have to recognize that maybe it's not it's it's just not supposed to be here anymore right exactly so it's funny that you say that because I have a fig tree and I don't feel the same way about my fig. I'm like, oh wow, you really love your fig. Oh <laughs> I can't my gosh, fig. I feel such a connection to that That's tree. That's so awesome. I was just uh, watering my plants this morning. And I'm like, yo, buddy, what's up? <laughs> and he, it was, just, it's just like, it's like my hair. It's like, yeah, I love it. I love it. That's why. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Okay, so anyway, sorry. So back to the crystal grid. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I mean, crystal grids are one way of setting intentions. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what I was saying. In meditation, yeah. mm -hmm. are you setting intentions with always. your crystals? Always, in? yes, always setting intentions. You can also, you can actually program a crystal for a specific intention. Interesting. You can program crystals for um, a, a purpose as well. Huh. You know, when when my son Robin went to um, his dorm. <laughs> uh huh. Here's the crystals. Aww. And he, you know, he's really good because he's been, he's grown up with all yes, this stuff, right? Yes, There's crystals awesome. everywhere. So he was used to it. And I was like, make sure they're in the sun. So they get cleansed. Yeah. And, you know, he, he likes, he, you know, he, he doesn't, yeah. he's not opposed to it. You know, yeah. he, he's like. Just he, being open. Yeah. And he's very open. sensitive too. He's okay. a, he's, a, he's a sensitive. He's just, um, sometimes, you know, when they're that age, they don't want to really. Yeah. They're just like, it. uh. Exactly. I yeah. Mean, he, I know we're going to come full circle on that one. Yeah. You, you know, once he gets older. Yeah. Yeah. We all had it. I've got, we all went through that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Ma, exactly. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's so true. And then you got to come back and then you appreciate. Then you're like, oh. Yeah. Mom, give me a hug. Yeah. And then you're there and, you're, then you're there and you're present with them exactly. together finally. Again, it, synchronicity and there has to be, the time has to be, you know, the right time. Do you, um, my question was with, when you're asking, when you said that if your mind is kind of going everywhere and you're sort of a little bit scattered, mm -hmm. I think in determinations of choices or sort of paths you want to take, do you find that maybe the messages that are come to, coming to you are asking you more questions for you to, instead of it just saying, you know, it's not going to be like, oh, yes. go left or go right, yeah. like a Ouija board, like here's yeah, the answer. Exactly. It's more like getting you closer to the yeah that's what i normally see it's not going to be and also we have free choice right we do it's, it's so even our, if you know that yeah what's the our answer. guides can can you know guide us um they can sort of push us in some direction or another or at least affirm yeah whatever you're thinking you know affirmation is is big too Absolutely. um but at the end of the day there's free choice so well, and it's so and funny. And how many people have said, I knew I shouldn't have done yeah, that. Yeah, that's like life I story. I knew life I story. shouldn't have done that, right? Yeah, totally. Because you weren't listening to your intuition. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've done it before. You know, I was like, oh, man. Well, I knew it. It's, it. it's there. You just have to listen to it. And it's like a muscle, right? You're going to listen to it. It's it. like the a more muscle. You, you flex it, the better it'll get. You yeah. Know? And it's more as just not hearing all the noise on the outside and kind of hearing your own voice and... I think there's, we all go through those phases where you're just kind of listening to everyone else's voices right. and what right. you should yes. do. And the, the word I always, the word should is such a harsh word because it's always, you know, I, I it's like full of guilt, mm -hmm. full of uh, mm -hmm. expectations right. that are unrealistic or just mm -hmm. negative. Mm -hmm. They just self-impose things right. that you make up your narrative, your narrative. Yes. That's not a real, you can always change your story. Always. Always. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's never too late. It's never yeah. too late. 
Well, and I was gonna say is what I really like is the idea. I saw this somewhere. It's like when you flip a coin, you ask a question, and you don't even look at the answer. You kind of your mind while the coins in the air. You already know what you mm -hmm. want it to say, mm -hmm. and that sort of gives you an idea of like what sort of inside what you really you would like. And may, and of course, it's based. It can be based on influences, like you said, free choice of things that right. maybe aren't the best choices. Right. But at least it it gives you an answer authentically through like your heart. Right. And you're using this thing. This. You know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. And I think a lot of the times. We may know the answer, but we don't want to do it. Exactly. Because We're it's afraid. either too hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're afraid. Fear is a big one. I know in the beginning of Backbenders, uh, I did have fear. Yeah. Fear of success. Fear of, like, being successful and what's that going to do with my family? Am I going to have enough time for them? Aww. Is my marriage going to survive? Like, that was my <sighs> big fear. Scary. Yeah. That was, and I had to get over that fear. Yeah. And now I'm like, let's rule the world. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes. So, but that was huge for like the first two years. That was really, really huge. And then I didn't really realize it until I sat down and like thought about it. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, because I mean, I came from a, of a family, a divorced family. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, my ki my parents were already divorced and separated by the time I was like four. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know that dynamic. And it was kind of important for me to have that dynamic. And that's another story. Yeah, yeah. So, um, do you feel like that, well, it care? I, I mean, I guess it did. It carried on through you as that fracture. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I, I, w I would remember, like, finding a penny. You know how you find a penny on the floor and you're yeah. like, make a wish. And I would always remember wishing for my parents to be Aww. together. I know. Aww. Boo. But, um, you know, they were better apart. Uh, let me tell Word you that. Word of. <laughs> I agree. I don't even know how they had five kids. It's uh, crazy, right? When you yeah. look back and you like look at, you're like, I'm like how did that you're happen? You're black and you're white. Yeah, you're like, There's what? like no gray anywhere. What's going? Yes. Yeah. How did that? Yeah. My dad's like a total jokester. I do get a lot from him. My mom is more serious. <laughs> <laughs> Very serious, not into jokes. So it's, um, for the most part, we're all, you know, so I have four brothers. I'm the only girl. And so... Where are you in the... I'm the second to the youngest. So Ooh. I have an older brother and then I have twin brothers that are oh. the next ones. Okay. So I was like, man, mom, you want to have more kids after that? <laughs> you had twins. <laughs> you had the double combo. I was like, whoa. <laughs> but they wanted a girl. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm the, roll the dice. I know. Kept rolling the dice. I know. I was just, a, and to think that, um, I was actually a twin as well. Whoa. It was like the sack formed and it, but the baby just never formed. Whoa. I know. I was like, man, mom, you got some crazy yeah, power some there. Yeah, crazy power there. <laughs> yeah. And, the, and really that's interesting. My mom had so many accidents when she was pregnant with me. She had, she fell like she, a chair <sighs> broke when she was sitting. Oh my and then gosh. there was a major car accident. Um, my dad's family That's lives scary. in El Paso. Okay. And um, the weather wasn't that great. My dad has a floor covering business, so he used to take uh, carpet for my grandma so she could, like, sell and hustle and get some extra money. So that's the only reason why everybody survived, because of the carpet. What? Because they turned. They <gasps> rolled. My mom flew out. Of, oh my god! She flew out of the window. She has like probably like eighty stitches in her leg. She was about six months pregnant with me. What? So her and one of the twins flew out, flew out of the car. Um, that's what she always says. She's like, "You are meant to be here because that accident was crazy, wow. insane." I know. And it's also back in the day when I mean yes. I don't know. I just think there it's no crazy. Cell phones. No, there's nothing. <laughs> I always think about that now, yeah. like just the way that things used to happen. It, it just it just worked out sometimes. I know. I know. I know. Isn't that crazy? What a trip. I was like, well, I was strong. Yeah. <laughs> you were strong. You pushed through. <laughs> yeah. So that's interesting because I, the way that you bring that up about family and the fracture and kind of moving on and I, I know you're a nurturer and a healer and that's sort of what yeah. it really comes down to. Right. Right. For you. I mean, I think. For sure. I, and I think it took me a while to realize that I was a healer. I just figured, man, you know, I'm just a good car. Like, I'm good at, at my job. Like, I take it serious, and I really want to help people. Yeah. But I noticed that it's not, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of chiropractors out there, and not all of them are good. But, that, you know, that's, that goes par for any, for any career or any job, I think. There's some more 
you know, proficient and some less proficient. Yeah. So um, I just, you know, I'm all in. I'm one of those people that's just like, if I go in on something, I'm all in. I'm all or nothing kind of thing. Yeah. So if I commit to something, that's why I, now I'm very, um, I'm a little bit more choosy on the things that I commit to because I know that if I do commit to something and if I can't go all in, it's really going to yeah, bother I'm the me. Same way. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm like, too. I really have to like be selective on the things that I commit to. It's the energy. Yeah. It's the amount of energy you know right. you're going to have to put into exactly, something. Exactly. Exactly. And again, I don't want it to affect, you know, other, yeah, other energies in your yeah, life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, family is really important to me. So, you know, I mean, my kids are a little bit older now, but still. Yeah. But yeah. you're always mother. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I, and I can totally see that. Do you, what, what made you decide, um, cause when did you open exactly what year? So, uh, actually backbenders has been there a while. The previous doctor had it for, I want to say, maybe 10 years. Mm -hmm. He moved out of state, and I took over in 2010. Oh, wow. Yeah, I took over in 2010, and... Um, Were you looking for a location, like, in that area? No. <laughs> no uh, so, interesting, I had I got pregnant with Robin in the middle of chiropractic college. Ooh, mm -hmm. whoa. Wasn't married. Okay. Um, so, we had a shotgun wedding. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're still together, 20 years wow. in November. Congrats. And so Robin was two when I graduated. Okay. So, you know, I did some pre, uh, my post sectorship and I did do some, you know, I was working. And then um, I got pregnant with Logan. Okay. And I got really sick. I got hyperemesis gravidarum. It's like extreme form of morning sickness. Oh my gosh. That's so horrible. I couldn't work. So I, and then I stayed home. You it, know, was it for. Was it through the duration? It of was the for pregnancy? about at least three months. Oh my god! Like the what a nightmare. like the second, third, fourth month of the pregnancy. Yeah. Like I had to go get IVs every week. Wow. Just you were losing so much. So much. Oh fluids. yeah, I lost weight. I lost like twenty five pounds. Oh my gosh. Um, it was it was weird because I'm like, what's going on here? Yeah. I, I couldn't be... he, I couldn't smell food. I couldn't open the fridge. I couldn't even wash the Food Network. It was oh, so wow. crazy. I was like, this. Is a bad joke. Yeah, <laughs> this is awful. a cruel joke because I love to eat. Yeah, so I'm like, what is going on? So anyhow, um, and and I was taking my boards, my last part oh of my, my boards gosh. with 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 uh, Logan. So poor kids, man. No wonder they're ADHD. <laughs> Robin, I was like in chiropractic college. Logan, I was studying for. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. I don't know. I was like, no time for this. Yeah, that's funny. And so, um, yeah. So I I with. <laughs> Poor Logan, but um, I got through it. And um, where were we going with this? <laughs> Your how you got to uh, oh how I got to this yeah. So I stayed with Logan for about six years. Stayed home. Okay. I didn't realize how much I would enjoy staying home with the boys. Aww. I really, you know, if I didn't have student loans, I don't know. I'd probably still be because I love to like cook and bake. Yeah, and, you're nesting. You know, I love to do all that stuff, and so. I knew this chiropractor, and so he just sent me an email one day. He's like, hey, I, I think I'm going to be moving if you want to take over, if you want to wow. take over my practice or buy my practice. And I was like, well. And I had tried to work there before. I think Logan was maybe like two years old when I, when I worked there, um, and it was just too tough. It was too tough. He was too young, you know, and then I had Robin who was like six or five. So the timing was just not, yeah, the timing wasn't good. And so, um, I only did it for like maybe three months, but it was interesting. He emailed me because he had, he has had, he had had other chiropractors in there and of all the other chiropractors that he had like working there, I was the one that most people asked for. Wow. And I literally was only for the, like three months. So he's like, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to email wow. him and or her. And so I talked to my husband and I said, what do you think? You know, the boys are a little bit older. Yeah. I was like, I th I can make it work. And he's like, it's up to you. So we used our home equity line of credit. Wow. <laughs> man. Wow. And we went ahead and that we did it. That is scary. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why he's like, you know, I, we gambled on, on that. So, um, and that's how I ended up with backbenders. That's amazing. Yeah. Like, I mean, talk about the timing, right? Yeah, and the universe coming to you. And, because I had gotten offered too. another chiropractic position a little further down on Colorado from where Backbenchers is, and it just wasn't the right time again. It just wasn't, you know? And so um, this time around, 
I, 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 you know, my husband's like, okay, well, when you say those words, then you can do it. So I'm yeah, like, I, th- I think I could do this. I was like, I think I, I think I could well, do this. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, because the boys were were a little bit older, so it was easier. I mean, it, it was I mean. still hard because they were still like in middle school and elementary. Yeah. Um, and I and I wasn't able to work as much. I was only there like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I had like a three hour lunch break because I had to pick up one kid from school, then the other kid from school, then bring them back home. Jeez. So I, I had a lot of like running around to do. But once they got a little bit older, they were in the same school. They w- went to Eagle Rock High School. Yeah. Um, then it became easier. And then as they got older, I started adding more hours. And yeah. now I'm there on Saturdays. Just so, expanding on that. Yeah. And now you're able to expand on all these other yes. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that was always my, like, you know, the office is here. Why don't I, you know, try to get some passive income out of that? That's and so smart. I found some amazing, amazing healers. And they... You know, we also just added acupuncture um, with uh, Tori. Um, so she rents space there, and her her space her her business is called Lark Acupuncture. And she's again not just a regular acupuncturist. She uses body talk, which is another. I don't know if you've ever no, had I, body I don't talk. Know so body it's talk. really interesting. Um, it's hard to explain. So look up body talk, okay, uh, or look up Lark Acupuncture, and she'll explain it in there. But um, I, f- I thought that was a good fit. It's interesting because she started off as a Pilates instructor there. Mm. And she had just finished her acupuncture. But, you know, she was like, you know, I, I really need to work. I'm, I'm going I'm to slowly build my acupuncture practice. And I just got a really good feeling from her. I said, yeah, and when you're ready, you can do it here. Wow. And she was like, oh, okay. And so it's cool. worked out. Yeah, it's amazing. So um, even though I'm not there, you know, on certain days, massage is always available and Pilates is always available. So That's amazing. Yeah. So, um, looking looking forward on the ideas and the things that you're trying to do, um, what do you see yourself sort of striving for in the next few years, or what what's the kind of the goal? Well, sounds def- like you're really goal oriented, and you look, yeah, you're looking you know, ahead a lot. I I struggle with the idea of opening up another practice, mm. and only because I think um, it's so special because of the way I structured backbenders now. And because I'm there, it's hard to teach somebody to do something unless it's sort of innate, innate in them. Innately, yeah. So I feel like I don't know if I'll lose some of the magic if we go to if we do a second. You know, I still have to think about it some more. I still have to like you know really meditate on that. But um, eventually, maybe a second practice and definitely get the auric feels to be really successful where it's more passive income with like selling the crystals and you know doing doing um events and is your you're you're located in the eagle rock area yes. your family what about like your your brothers and every is everyone there sort of near you too? um well let me see i have one brother in las vegas and then one in long beach so no we're sort of spread out wow, and then spread out. yeah one's in santa clarita and one is in whittier my dad lives by, lives real close. He's in, in Highland Park. Okay. He's been in Highland Park forever. forever. Yeah. So, and that's really why I know Eagle Rock. Yeah. And why I know Highland Park, because he lived in, like, La Montaña Apartments in, <laughs> in Highland Park um, when my parents split up. So, when we would go visit him, we got to know Highland Park. We got to know Eagle Rock. And um, when it came time for us, my husband is like, talk about, he's from Hancock Park. Um, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> so we're like, yeah, we're not going to find anything in Hancock Park. And I don't really, I didn't want to live there. That wasn't going to be like my style. So when we were looking, one of my brothers was living in Glasgow Park. Okay. And I was pregnant with Robin at the time. And um, we're like, well, this is kind of cool. Like we liked like the hills and, you know, yeah, the neighbors. It's, nice. and, uh, it's a beautiful area. Yeah, it's so nice. I and so there. we ended up, you know, buying a house in Glasgow Park. And which was nice because at the time I, I still had a brother there and my dad's there and my mom lives with my oldest brother. So um, everybody was there. So it was nice. You know, we've been there. It was supposed to be a starter home, but you know. How yeah. Goes. <laughs> yeah, totally. You know how that goes. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I'm not Park. there yet, people. I know, I know. <laughs> but Glasgow Park is such a cool place it's, to be. It's nice. It's, yeah. You know. I think we got in right yeah. when it got like a little, like now, now it's, it's crazy. crazy. I was like, my house is worth what? Yeah, I know. I, I used to live in Glasgow Park, and I mean, I look back like, and I was too. We moved when I was like fourteen or thirteen, and I was just like, "Oh, mom, you should have like kept that house somehow." I know. Like, because we were, yeah, yeah. I was. It was. I love Glasgow Park. It's good energy it's really there. Nice. You know, we're so like 
so much culturally the same kind of yeah. people. Like, our, yeah. we have our little village and yeah. then our tribe of people that, you yeah. know, who we are or whatever. So, anyway. So, yeah. So, I guess my next question is, um, because you're on this podcast and it is First Among Equals, um, what is it that you think um, the idea is, First Among Equals is, being first but, like more in an equal stance with everyone mm -hmm. around you. What is it that you're trying to convey to the community or trying to sort of add to um, our neighborhood? So I, I'm very um, pro-like um, having access, having everybody having access. Okay. That's one of the things why I started our Healthy Happy Hour uh, at okay, Backbenders. Cool. Tell us about that. So it's a it's a te it's three times a, a month okay. that you can come in and you can pay cash and get a huge discount on my regular services. So um, and I'm here late, so I do like four to eight p.m. Mm. So to be able to accommodate, accommodate the people after like, work yeah. and that kind of stuff. And um, and I'm also constantly always donating to high schools. You know, to all, you know, my kids Giving. went to the neighborhood schools. Absolutely. Um, I also, you know, donate to the other businesses that have, like, you know, um, chair that are doing charities. Yeah, or, silent auctions yeah, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Kind of thing. Dogs are a big thing. I have three dogs. And Titus, if you ever come to Backbenders, you'll see Titus. Hanging out. Yeah, he comes in the mornings with me. Everybody knows Titus. And so, so any, any sort of way that I can fit in, in that. Yeah. Where I can contribute. Um, I, I try, I try to contribute, whether it be like donating, you know, my kids do water sports. So whether it be donating towards equipment, um, even just like, um, donors choose. I always try to look is, is, uh, Delavan. My kids went to Delavan. Is, yeah. is Delavan looking for stuff? Is Franklin Aww. looking for stuff? Anything in the neighborhood. I really try to like, you Give know, back. yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's the biggest part of having to be successful is, um, having the opportunity to give back yeah that's that's really huge for me yeah absolutely I think sharing the wealth and the knowledge I like to just even doing this right now you're even doing... knowledge because there's no, so many yeah. people that hoard that like yep. you know and it's that's one to me it's like no way like what do you want to know I'll tell you yeah. you know that for me that's and and I say that to uh, even my employees or or the the people that work at the office it's like you know what if this is just a landing spot for you yeah i'm happy to have you're you okay with that i'm okay with that i love that you know? so many people make it so like this is it yeah. this is what you have to do or, exactly or it no. means something for you and it you're not it's yeah. not about them it's about you because if i mean life is about growing right so you can't just be stagnant you know if I just say, you know, do the best. Uh, I'm just going to ask for your best. If this is a landing spot for you, I totally get it. Yeah. Just, like, do your best, and that's it. And, like, your success is my success. I mean, mm -hmm. you go on to do huge things, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, I, I'll be happy to have at least had a little bit of contribution to that's that. That's so beautiful. Um, You brought up earlier wanting to learn and being a huge nerd and all that. Have you always felt that need to always grow? Have there, Has there ever been... Yeah, I've always been a big... Um, a person uh, a person who read a lot I was always sort of looking for knowledge like just looking for things I remember being in elementary school and asking my dad for a book on reincarnation wow and he was like yeah <laughs> yeah, <'cause it's> all... <laughs> yeah, and so I. And wow. My mom is very religious, so she threw it away. Oh, but I was like, that is such an old school mom. Yeah, move. exactly. Throw it all away. Exactly. Throw the letters away. CDs, but she throws my yeah, CDs away. Exactly. That's so what funny. did Luis Miguel do to you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'm like, she, she. Uh, so that was a. That's always been an, an influence with me as far as like books and just reading, just opening your horizons. Um, a lot of times. The growth doesn't happen because you're not open to it, you know, yeah. if you get exposed to it, you know, I think that's why it's so important for, to, you know, exposing kids to like art and like, you know, just other ways, things. other yeah. modalities of learning and exactly. appreciation yeah. early too. Exactly. Like my youngest son, he's not a book person and my husband is not a book person. You know, Robin is a book person. He's like me. We're like, he's my bud. We're like always discussing you that's know, so that's cool. why I was like all sad when he went away to college. I was Aww, like, I'm going to talk to you Aww. about these things because my husband's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, but don't you want to debate the, you know, I know that's like, so funny. No. 
<laughs> so, um, but, but uh, yeah, with, with Logan, that was a big like lesson because I'm like, okay, yeah. What do I do with you? You yeah, know, and I made different. mistakes. I totally made mistakes with him. Like I thought he, cause he's very artistic. So I was like, oh, let's do this arts charter. Totally screwed him up. It mm. wasn't the right move for him. And he regressed. And then I went back to like the LAUSD and that's what he needed. He needed structure. Yeah. So, you know. Is it because you felt like, um, cause artists, because mm -hmm. mm, I want to. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, we're kind of floating in the universe mm -hmm. and sort of all over the place. And it's like you need that grounding. That grounding. You do. Because yeah. if you're in a place where everyone else is like this. And he was different because Robin was, he was like more like me. So I totally understood him. Yeah, it was easier to kind oh, of figure yeah, it out. Oh, yeah, it was so much easier. And Logan is just like my husband. My husband is more artistic. He works in the movie industry. Yeah. He would die working in like a nine to five job. A regular job. job. Yeah, oh, yeah. So crazy. He cannot, you know, and the movie industry is, is just full it's of crazy. ADHD the movie, people. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Those hours. Uh -huh. and this... Yeah, and just like working in different places. So, you know, I ha he was a big lesson. I mean, Robin was too, but I mean, he was in that respect. He was a big lesson of, of like how how does he learn like how can I help him to uh, just get through because we all know you just gotta do it you just gotta get through high school you just gotta college get is it. so different it is so different you know it's, and it can be very different yes, for whoever yes exactly it could you know like you just gotta play the game till you get to through you know word on that the, you know and so it's just trying to help him with that and and I would tell Robin too I was like college is so different. You're going to love it. You're going to love yeah. college. And he does. He loves it. He really does. I knew he would. Yeah. Logan, you know, everybody learns differently. He may not. School's not for everybody. Yeah. You know? It was for me, but it's not for everybody. And I'm like, you know, whatever you want to do, you know, if you want to follow your dad and do the movie industry, you know, or it's, it's a good job and, you know. It's a lot easier now, I think that I think we can have these conversations with kids like that. Right. Because 20 years ago, it was like... You're just dumb. You're dumb. You're either... Yeah. You go to college, and yeah. you do it, and you jump through all the hoops, and register, and you have to physically go and register yeah. at the time that they open, and you right. have to go buy the books at the, right. when the library uh -huh. or the bookstore is open. But it's so interesting to me now, because I feel like I find so many people are just more... The generations have just changed so much yeah. that we can say, like, yeah, you don't have to do that. And I think because of the trades are sort of lacking and tech schools are sort of not on the like they're not being utilized yeah. to the degree that yes. they should be and because of the automation yeah. and sort of technology it's like we're missing on all these craftsmen we're missing out on all yes. these technical things that you cannot automate with robots you cannot right. automate it's right. the individuality of a person being able to right. have that artistic eye or have that connection right. with the movies and I mean that's, that's humans do that and I yeah. think We've, we pushed that away for so many years. It was yeah. just like, you're dumb. Yeah. You know, you're not playing the game. Right. So we had all these kids who just sort of ciphered into exactly. this. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I know. I, I, that, that's what I wanted to avoid. I wanted to avoid that with him just because, you know, they can get lost and they wander. I mean, my husband wandered a little bit because, you know, he never was a good student and, um, yeah. you know, it was hard for him, um, like reading and stuff like that. He's really good at math, but that guy can build anything. That's amazing. He can fix anything. Yeah. You know, so that's where his, that's where he, his that's gifts his lie in that, yeah. you know, like, totally. you know, um, girls marry a handy guy. Yeah. Um, pro tip there, but it's so you like, who's going to do that? Exactly. You Who's going to do that? Exactly. It's going to be us. It's going to be yeah. man. It's not going to be. Exactly. And so I find it. We. I mean, it's a it's a very useful tool. I mean, we That's have we to started. have everything. We have to have every. We have to have of everything. We have to have doctors. We yeah. have to have people that you a know craftsmen who can build exactly. something and build yes. homes and and nobody should be clean. less than the other. Exactly. Because everything is useful. Everybody is useful. Yeah. Exactly. And and I always think about it in that sense too. Is when we have this structure that's sort of more encouraging and more open-minded, and I feel like now culturally we're all starting to say and recognize that everyone's uniqueness is important. Right. And, you know, like you said, back in the day, nerdy nerdy was not cool. Yeah. 
Now people want or to glasses. see. Or glasses. Or and, curly hair. Or, yeah, you remember. <laughs> you yeah, remember the totally. shit you had to go through. Yeah. And you remember not it being, I'm I'm very thick build. Yeah. That curvy. was not yeah. curvy. That was not cool. Yeah. It was the skinny. Exactly. The yeah. skinny white girl look. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. back in the day. It was yeah. like, that's, no hips. No hips. Just <laughs> long and yeah. sleek, blonde, long, straight yes. hair. Yes. It was, yeah, it was Christina Applegate all day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. I love her, but I love yeah. her too. But yeah, and I think now it, it, things are going, even though I sometimes I'm a pessimist with all the things that are kind of happening and, um, er, you know, just the weird stuff that's going on. At the same time, I'm starting to see that there is more of a relaxing, like, okay. Of norms. Of norms. Yeah. Of things norms. can be, yeah, exactly. And an acceptance of things. Because I think the, they used to say, well, they didn't, the, the nerds are ruling the world. Right. So all these people that used to get shit on and all yeah. the people that were ignored yeah. and they're all made movies, six figures. they're all making six figures. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, and all the cool people, what happened to you guys? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? You peaked in high school. See what happens? You peak too quickly. <laughs> exactly. When you peak too quickly and you have nothing else to offer exactly. or, you, or you just rely on you, on that, on yeah. your on your looks or on. Right. And, and that was a big, actually a big talking point because I have boys of like, dude, don't about it yeah isn't You're, that crazy it's gonna, it's gonna happen it's gonna happen it's gonna, it kicks i in. was a like a, a slow blue up uh, late, oh, late bloomer so was my husband i'm like that's just what's gonna happen to y'all yeah and so you know i'm like it's okay like it'll happen everything's gonna happen don't worry about it like college is totally different totally you're gonna have a good time you're gonna make awesome friends you're you know, he goes to the University of Redlands, so it's pretty quirky up there. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it's perfect for him because he's like, you know, gamer, nerd, yeah, intellectual. Yeah. He's like really, you know, he reads a lot. He's very well read. So he's like cerebral in that way. But um, it's a, it's, it's one of those things that I definitely stressed on my kids. Like, it's fine. Yeah, it'll you'll work find out. Your, you'll find your, your way. You don't have to be like Mr. Popular or whatever. There's an imp I think there's also an impatience that you have when you're younger. You just yeah. want it now. You I mean I, we I still have that, but Yeah. Or it makes them feel awkward. I know. Yeah. It does make them feel like you know, awkward or like am I am I okay or yeah. something wrong with me and I'm like, dude, no. Yeah, you're and at, like and at that age exactly it's all where about you, you need to be. Yeah. And that age it's all about you though. Exactly. It's like you think everything is about you and it's just mm -hmm. the whole world is so it's Anyways. like, just get good grades, dude. That's yeah, all just, you have to worry about. Yeah, just get good grades. Get, <laughs> just get through it and it'll Keep work Keep your scholarship. Out. Exactly. Because oh I can't afford Redlands. Dude, I know. Redlands is beautiful, though, yeah. too. Yeah. It's it's really pretty. Yeah. It, I'm glad he went. He was looking at, like, um, a school in Canada. And I was like, okay. <sighs> Yeah. And then like, he realized, oh. oh, no, it's too far. I was like, yeah. I and it's cold. Map. Yeah. I don't You're know. You're a California kid. You're a California kid. Yeah. It's hard. It's yeah. hard to be living in the bubble of yeah. the weather and everything. Yeah. And it's so great because where you live and where you work, I mean, the way we are, it's like the bubble of California and all the things that you're bringing to the neighborhood and the community. I mean, I think it's just amazing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I um, That's one thing that I I, I want to be like the hub for the, the community. Like um, even the kids at Eagle Rock. They know that if they need some support on something, you know, let's just ask me. Oh, you that's know? awesome. Just ask me. If I can do it, I'll say yes. You know, if I can't do it, I'll, yeah, I'll tell you the truth. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I always want to help. You. Exactly. Always. Yeah. What um? What do you think now after you've done the business? What would you recommend? Let's say if someone else is trying to start like a similar holistic connected business this way, what would you, what kind of advice would you give anybody who's doing this, something like this? Hmm. I would definitely um, start with the finances because I think a lot of businesses fail because they don't have enough backing financially. Um, it's great to like have an idea and be able to execute it, but you have to have the funding. Luckily for us, we were able to use that home equity line of credit, but, but I mean, the pressure was like, yeah, you got it. No, dude, that's yeah, real. You have, that's you. Exactly. You have that's to, all or nothing. you have to, um, you know, get some you know, make it work to pay that back. So, um, I would say that for sure. And, um, just, you know, be good, be good at what you do. If yeah. you're good at what you do, people will notice and they'll come back to you. Yeah. You know, um, that's basically like in a nutshell, you know, yeah. just, just, you know, have, um, feel pride in, in what you do. 
you know, and, and like my mom used to say, you know, even if, if even if you're a trash collector, just be the best one. Yeah. Like just, just be the best one. Just strive for that. And that's same, same knowledge I, I impart for the boys. Like, so you want to do that. That's fine. Yeah. Just try your best. Make sure you, you're doing the best job you can possibly. And I mean, that's, that's basically it. Um, I did have the, um, I was, uh, able to work with somebody that had a business, mm -hmm. uh, it was more of a high volume. It was a different... I'm, I'm actually glad that I had that experience because uh, it really made me, made me realize I don't want to have that kind of practice. Interesting, yeah. Um, it was more of a high volume where you do like a lot of workers' comp and PI oh, okay. cases. okay. So you're just turning them in kind yeah, of... Yeah. And it just wasn't for me. You know, it just wasn't for me. I'm, I'm better off with just like, it's just me. You're going to see me. Um, nobody else is going to work on you. Um, I don't see as many people... But I'm fine with that. You know, I'm okay with that. I, I'd rather give uh, the quality That's than awesome. have the quantity. Yeah. And do you feel like you found, did you have strong mentors? Um, I would say she would have been one of my mentors, but I really, I can't think of um, anybody in particular. Do you think it was your, you, it was all you, your confidence and your drive? I guess so. You know, and just, you know, the support of um, my husband, obviously. You know, because he, he was like, well, you've been the best investment so far. Aww. So, yeah, um, knowing that, you know, if anything, he had a good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, you could fall back a little bit. <laughs> yeah, on that. but uh, tables have turned, though. So yeah. he's, yeah. <laughs> That's why you're here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Thank Betty. You you've been such a pleasure. Me. I'm really excited that you're here. <laughs> thank um, you. Do you want to do any plugs or anything? Um, or Instagram? events or anything people want to follow you yeah so you can definitely follow us at uh back.benders on instagram we're on facebook too you can also follow the auric fields on instagram we have a uh, websites on both backbenders and the auric fields and yeah if you guys have any questions dm me anytime Awesome. Swing by, check out Crystal. Check it out. I'll be more than happy to give you a Crystal prescription. <laughs> oh, I love that. All right. Well, thank you so much thank again. Thank you. And thank you for watching First Among Equals. And we'll see you next week. Bye.